When will the next expansion be? When will patch 9.2 come out? Will there even be a patch 9.3? These are some of the most common questions that I get. So, let's go. By the end of this video, we should all have a better idea of what to expect from the future of Warcraft. Warlords of Draenor infamously cut out a patch, the Shatrath Raid, um, ending up having a total of two raid tiers. Of course, remember that Highmall and Blackrock Foundry were originally part of the same tier, with Highmall intended to be a, like, smaller intro raid. A bit like how the Emerald Nightmare raid had fewer bosses and did not drop tier gear. Well, fast forward to Battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands, and those smaller intro raid tiers are not really a thing. Uldir and Nathria are full-blown, full raids, right? Over time, we've moved away from a big launch with a minor and major raid, and over to having the first raid be a more properly sized thing. At least that's how Blizzard's messaging surrounding this has changed. So, Warlords of Draenor had Tier 17 and Tier 18, Blackrock Foundry and Hellfire Citadel. Plus, of course, the Highmall intro raid. And when people talk about Warlords of Draenor being cut short, they're referring to that missing Shatrath raid, which of course would have constituted a tier, and would have had a lot of content as well. Because when people say that it cut a tier, they're really referring to it cutting a major content patch. Something that we've really been taught to expect two of per expansion. So when Ian was asked if Shadowlands would repeat Warlords of Draenor and cut a tier, Ian said it wouldn't. That confirmed that 9.1 wouldn't be the final patch. Because, of course, Shadowlands' 9.1 is the equivalent of Warlords of Draenor 6.2, because 6.1 was the selfie cam patch and uh, didn't really have content. Oh, okay, so that's a long way of saying that Ian confirming that Shadowlands won't pull a wad is Ian saying that 9.1 won't be the final major content patch or raid tier, essentially confirming patch 9.2, but certainly not confirming patch 9.3. This means that the bare minimum for Shadowlands is 9.2, then it's over. So let's see how this fits in to our schedule. Renown level 40 was hit March 9th, 2020. Patch 9.1 then came out just over three months later. Well, Renown level 80 will be hit October 19th. If patch 9.2 was to release just three months after that, then we could expect late January or early February. It could be slightly longer because of work from home or Christmas break, but if you look at patch 9.1, I think you can see a lot of asset reuse. You can see a relatively small amount of content. All of this has me thinking that they were probably keen to get pre-production and production on 9.2 started a bit quick. Patch 9.1.5, then, will likely launch late October, after Renown Level 80, of course, or early November, with Patch 9.2 appearing on the PTR quite soon after that. 8.3 hit PTR in early October of its year, and it launched January 14th, three months. If Patch 9.2 hit PTR mid-November, then mid-February could be a viable launch date. Mm, but yeah, we really are cutting it close here. That is the challenge. A pandemic is a problem, but this patch is at least one that would have wholly been conceived during pandemic, very much benefiting from the lessons of SHIP and 9.1. Maybe they reduced scope a little bit to compensate and tried to work out how they could be okay in time. What then about a patch 9.3? Will that exist? There is a similarity and a difference to BFA here. Patch 8.3 launched early 2020. Shadowlands launched late 2020. However, by the time Patch 8.3 launched, we already knew about Shadowlands because it was unveiled at BlizzCon 2019. Of course, BlizzCon 2021 was cancelled, instead being replaced by an online event in early 2022. That really should not impact production schedules massively, it'll probably more just impact the announcement schedule. All of this begs the question then, how do expansion timings work out, and is there even room for patch 9.3? If 9.3 exists, then they'll have to build that instead of making progress on the next expansion, given how the timings are lining up, as I just said. 
Now, we all know that financially, expansion launches rake in the money, and with Shadowlands having a bit more of an iffy post-launch life, they're probably keen to get out of the Shadowlands, and they're probably aware that some people are just burnt out on it and need a big, new, exciting thing with new features to get them back into the product. Because of this, I find it personally very hard to see Blizzard justifying 9.3 existing, especially since 9.3 would likely push the next expansion into 2023, which I suspect would piss off the money people and mean that any of those lapsed players because of Shadowlands are really going to be solidly gone. To be honest, doing no 9.3 is probably the call that I would make too. Remember, uh, Ian saying that they're not going to pull a Warlords of Draenor? That really just means us getting two major content patches with raids. What people would traditionally see as three raid tiers. Well, that would be Launch, Chains of Domination, and 9.2. Where else does Shadowlands go after that conclusion of a 9.2? Is it set up for a 9.3? Because sure, the story of Zoval having the sigils and doing things could be stretched across two patches, but with him not being that uh, cared about by players and Sylvanas already being subdued, and Blizzard saying that Zoval was the final boss, I mean, surely it's a case of him launching his big plan to remake reality, and us stopping him and that being that. I mean, the Elune stuff was put to bed oddly fast. Maybe it's the case they had more planned there originally, but had to cut it. And very much, it doesn't seem like we've got a nazoth sized B-plot to follow this time around. So for all these reasons, I do believe the 9.2 will be the final major content patch of Shadowlands, and I'm happy enough with that myself. Right, what about beyond that then? And our next expansion. A mid-Feb 9.2 could work. Could even be late Feb or early March, whatever. We could then get a late February or early March, whatever, BlizzCon line that unveils the next expansion. How the hell does that expansion end up releasing in 2022, though? That's the question. Well, Blizzard have been doing an expansion every two years for a long, long time. I mean, Warlords of Draenor through to now, it's been one every two years. Well... An alpha test through to expansion launch cycle of around six months that would actually be in line with many previous WoW expansions. So a late February announcement of expansion, uh, well, 10.0, that could equal an April 2022 alpha test. October 2022 would be six months after that as a release date. And funnily enough, the Shadowlands alpha was April 2020 and Shadowlands' intended launch date was late October 2020. So, patch 9.2 likely in February of next year, then a 10.0 reveal, and then testing beginning sort of April, May, and then a release October, November. Look, there's no doubt this would be a squeeze, but it is just about the only way the Blizzard could hold on to something that resembles their normal plan and get a WoW release vaguely on schedule. And of course, unlike the Shadowlands development cycle, a pandemic wouldn't suddenly appear and change the rules of the game out from under them. 10.0 will have been wholly conceived and developed with one workflow and no catastrophic changes. Indeed, something may actually be being done right now to support achieving these goals. Follow World of Warcraft designers on Twitter, and one thing you'll definitely notice is the job postings. They are staffing up over there. Some of this is probably to replace losses, no doubt, but it has been said by Blizzard staff, uh, Halinka in one instance, I believe, that this is team expansion, at least in the context of the jobs he posted. Staff hired in Q3 2021, and by the way, there have been hires going on through the summer as well, well, they'll be hitting their stride in 2022, Q1, Q2. Maybe a bit later for the staff who maybe get hired in early Q4 of this year. But certainly that's enough to help with the next expansion's big push. I've also heard the Blizzard are trying to combat their low wage problems, so maybe that could help things be better. All that said though, let's talk about the obvious. You can't talk about game release dates in the current sort of situation, without noting that ambitious games get delayed. That's the one thing we've learnt. Halo Infinite, Her Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, countless, countless, countless other games as well. They have been delayed for bloody obvious reasons. 
Curiously though, not Call of Duty. Many as a publisher would probably have delayed Shadowlands into Q1 of 2021, because it really needed it, but not Activision Blizzard. It had a minor delay to polish it up to be a releasable state, but it needed another few design, like, iterations. I mean, just look at how barren Blizzard's release slate has been. Shadowlands must have been needed for them. I guess, I just don't see them as really the delaying type these days, massively. Like, not a proper, you know, half a year delay to get it right. And it's a live game. You've got to balance the concerns of, what if the players have nothing to do and just go away somewhere else and don't come back? I really think they will do almost anything to ensure that World of Warcraft gets a full expansion in 2022. Because if Shadowlands comes out in 2020 and ends up being a bit of a dud, and then it's 2023? A lot of people are just no longer going to be interested. So I think they will make those sacrifices, even if that means sacrificing some content. Let's bring it back to the final thing, the thing that matters, the players. If Legion, Battle for Azeroth, and Shadowlands all last about two years, which they probably will, well then the sad fact is that the value proposition has indeed got worse and worse over time. You know, less content delivered per sub fee paid. And that is what happens when an expansion has got to spend much of its time fixing systems problems instead of pushing itself forward and having ambitious new content. Think of Shadowlands. Many bets did not pay off. They misjudged Torghast completely. They filled the game with friction. Then patch 9.1 had to spend a bunch of time fixing the Torghast feature, leaving us with a decent raid, a pretty poor endgame zone, and then a launch feature feeling really like it should have in beta. 9.1.5 save the excellent Legion time walking that I'm very happy about, while 9.1.5 will have been spent fixing design oversights and mistakes of both launch and 9.1. Time spent fixing systems mistakes is not time spent pushing the game forward. Then throw in the pandemic being challenging. Blizzard's bets have not paid off. They've had to pick up the pieces afterwards. And then the real life timings of the world could not have been worse. If content timelines and value proposition are to move in the right direction, then I think what we need is a degree of going back to basics, making less risky systemic bets, and focusing on executing content features to classic Blizzard polish. If it's any consolation, I've actually heard the 9.1.5 involved more staff freedom and, uh, you know, some of the top-down calls of patch 9.1 being a bit overridden and undone, which it certainly looks like if you look at the patch notes. So, you could say that's false hope, but, I mean, if you look at the 9.1.5 changes directionally, I think that could be reason to hope. And with that, that's the video done. I think now you know roughly what to expect from World of Warcraft in the next calendar year or so. I hope you found that interesting anyway, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.